So the next surfaces that I want to talk about are called cylinders. Um, cylinder, is it one L or two L's? Do you know? One? Okay, cylinder. So, and, and they're a bit, a bit different than, than the other uh, surfaces we've been talking about. So for example, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. This is a cylinder. And why is that? Note that there's no z here. Do you see a z? No z, right? So for any z, we get the exact same section, an ellipse. Do you agree? Okay. So for all z's, we're going to just get... It, 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 this is just a, a big, big, big pile of ellipses, right? So there's an ellipse here, and it's exactly the same ellipse at any, at any z. So the shape is just what you would call a cylinder. Does everybody agree that this is what we get? Okay. And this is called an elliptic. Cylinder. Good? Okay. And, and by the way, it's of course infinite, right? It's, it's not like your standard... Um, finite cylinders that you have in real life, like your bottle there or whatever. But there are other, other surfaces that are also called cylinders, and in fact we call something a cylinder whenever one of the variables uh, doesn't change the, the section. Okay? So for example, um, um, y equals x squared, this thing, this is also a cylinder. Okay, so what is y equals x squared? Let's think for a minute. First of all, again, it doesn't see z, right? For any z, we're going to get the, exactly the same points x, y that solve this, right? So for, for every z, this is y, this is x, y equals x squared is a parabola that looks something like this. I'm drawing it on the x, z plane. Do you agree that this is y equals x squared and it's drawn on the floor? Do you see that? Okay. Now if you look up at a higher z, this is z, again you're going to get this parabola here. Do you agree? And if you look further down, this doesn't become negative ever, so this is not an accurate drawing. Maybe more like this. And if you look further down, let's say at this z, again, it's going to be this parabola here. Okay, so what, what, what you should picture, all in all, is again, this shape here. Here it is. It's this thing. Do you see it? It's a parabola, but it's sitting here, and it's the same parabola for every z. Do you see that? Does everybody understand what I drew here and why I'm holding my paper like this? Good? So this is also called a cylinder, okay? But this is called a parabolic cylinder. Parabolic cylinder. Sorry. Clear? Good? And just a remark, all these surfaces that we've been drawing, of course, you can uh, change the names of the variables and by that rotate them. B by just changing the names of the variables, you'd be rotating them and they'd still be uh, parallel to the axes, but just different axes. Okay, so if you take instead of y equals x squared, if you take y equals uh, z squared, instead of getting this, you'd get this, right? Or if you take instead of x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, if you take x squared over a squared plus z squared over b squared equals 1, you'd get a, a cylinder that looks like this rather than like this, right? Okay, so, and you can do that for all the, all the surfaces that we've been studying in the past few uh, clips. Okay, good. One final uh, surface that I want to discuss Maybe I should have actually started with this one, but it's, um, 
actually a bit different than the rest. So, so tell me what you think this is. x minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus z minus c squared equals r squared. Right. Well, a ball indicates that it's a, that it's a solid, that it includes the, the inside. This is called a sphere. It's only the surface, it's only the outside, okay? So this is called a sphere. Solutions for this are points x, y, z, whose distance from the point a, b, c is precisely r. Do you see that? That's how we measure distances between, between two points in space, right? So if this is the point a, b, c, somewhere here, all the points whose distance from the point A, B, C is fixed are going to lie on some sphere centered at A, B, C. Let's make it a slightly bigger. Centered at A, B, C. And to indicate that it's a three-dimensional object, I do this. Centered at A, B, C with radius C has to be in the center, with radius r. Clear, everybody? Good? Okay, so all of, this kind of wraps up the, the, the surfaces that I wanted to draw for you. We're going to be using surfaces all throughout the course. And it's very important to, to go over this, okay, to, to practice drawing them, to practice deciphering the, the um, uh, equations, to, and, and in particular, uh, I have this feeling that some of you are not too secure about uh, the two-dimensional stuff, about what is an equation of a hyperbola, and what is an equation of a circle or an ellipse, so please start by going over those, okay, you have to know that well. Okay, so surfaces are two-dimensional, or sorry, three-dimensional objects, okay, but they're, they're, they're two-dimensional in nature. They're just sitting in, in three-dimensional space. Do you agree? Okay, they're two-dimensional, like we live on the surface, right? On the, we live on a sphere. What we see around us is we feel it is, is two-dimensional, right? We're not... Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to, to say here? Okay? We live in three-dimensional space, but the surface of the Earth is a two-dimensional uh, surface, okay? The analog of a one-dimensional... So, and, and, and these are generalizations of the most basic surfaces, which were planes, right? Those were really two-dimensional. Those were flat surfaces. The one-dimensional analog... So what's the one-dimensional flat thing? That's just a line, right? The more generalized one-dimensional object in three-dimensional space is going to be not a line, but a curve. Okay? And that's what we're going to study next.